their garage. Well, it is cold outside. It's in the 30s, but it's nice and warm in the shop here. It's about 60 degrees, so I thought it'd take a little bit of time to start cleaning up, especially my workbench, get this all cleaned off from the uh, JK and some of the Maverick projects and doing all the other garbage, so I got a lot of it thrown away. Um, I wanted to take a few minutes to tie up some loose ends on the JK remodel, restore, redone, uh, and go over a few last minute things that I did to the Jeep uh, that are super exciting, I'm sure that you want to see. <laughs> the first one was, if you remember when I started doing the bodywork on the JK, I destroyed the VIN labels and the uh, tire label uh, on the side of the door because we were changing colors. You can see on this one, at some point somebody tried to peel off the VIN label, or maybe did peel off the VIN label, like this. And uh, it's pretty much toast at that point. And the uh, tire thing, I have to take it off to paint. But I have a surprise for that, so keep watching. I did find a new supplier who is just absolutely awesome with these uh, VIN labels, so I will be doing a video on where to get yours for them, from them uh, at a reasonable price. So anyway, I'll be taking that off and start prepping on the door. So once the Jeep was painted, I went ahead and got a hold of my friends over at Vin's Labels. Brian is a great guy, let me tell you. He makes all kinds of labels. If you ever need a replacement label for anything, it doesn't have to be a Vin label. It could be a restoration that you're doing something funky. He can handle it. Um, they did a great job on the Vin labels and this is what they look like when I was finished with it. And there are the decals, and they look like factory ones, actually better than factory because the old ones were all janked up. So that really set off the Jeep restoration as being done. So Brian, I can't thank you enough. That is just the finishing touch to the paint job. When you open the door and you see the VIN label and the tire inflation label, it looks like that's the way it came from the factory. And uh, thank you for your help with that. Uh, I put a link down to their website, so if you need any labels, VIN, uh, tire sticker, uh, don't jump out of the moving vehicle, you contact him, he'll hook you up. <laughs> Next thing, uh, something totally random. Da, 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 da. Well, hey, come on up here. I'm just out here in the back in my super cool outdoor man cave with my fake gas fireplace, cigar, and a nice porter. And I'm just enjoying the quiet cold winter time. Today's story has to do with pawn shops here in the natural area called Music City Pawn. Now recently they were in the news because the police department had an 11 month long investigation where they came in and arrested the owner. And what was he doing? Well, old Mr. Holland, it, did, it turns out, was doing some illegal crap. The old Music City Pawn. We buy gold and we sell stolen. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, here's a sad, sad sign. We'll be closed a few days, pawns are safe, and there's no interest. Ooh, how sad is that? This is my local, one of the local pawn shops here in town. So the police went into Franklin and arrested the scumbag number one, Damon Holland, who's the owner of these said pawn shops. Now, Damon decided he had this guy named John Barker who is called the Booster. And the Booster went to all these stores grabbing merchandise and just walking out the doors without even being questioned. Lowe's, Home Depot, a bunch of other retail locations to which Music City Pond gladly put this on their eBay marketplace who had 21,000 sales. It's estimated that they sold over $800,000 worth of merchandise below retail. Amazing. Now, as the story goes, Home Depot uh, loss prevention went to Metro Police Department and said, They're stealing from us. These people are stealing from us, and we saw it on eBay. That's our stuff. That's our stuff. So, Metro Police launched an investigation. It takes 11 months, a bunch of manpower, all kinds of tracking and buying and selling and, and uh, investigative work, and finally, then they can arrest Mr. Holland, who's the main number one scumbag, as we said before. So you have to give a hi-ho, how, how do you do, to the Metro Police who caught the jerks and pat them on the back and say, good job. But that also asks another question, right? Why in the world does Home Depot allow people to steal so much stuff from them that they have to go to the police and go, so many stealing our stuff. Why don't they stop the people themselves? Stop the wholesale raping of the retail establishments that we go into. 
when you go to Sam's Club or you go to Costco, which are memberships, I know, that you have to show them a receipt when you leave. Why don't you put a sign out in front of the Home Depot that says, if you come into our store voluntarily, you will be searched at the end if we don't think you paid for your merchandise, so don't try to sue us. How about that? How about you do that? Because here's the bottom line. Not only are we as the consumer having to pay for the merchandise that is stolen, otherwise Home Depot would go out of business, they have to make a profit, but on top of that, because of the way this played out, we had to pay higher prices at Home Depot, and now because Home Depot refuses to do anything to keep these crackhead meth addicts from stealing stuff from the stores, and the entitled rich white folk that live in my neighborhood selling it and going out on their jet ski boats, then we have to pay through tax dollars our police to go do the job that Home Depot should have done themselves and said, don't steal from us. So this will never end until uh, Home Depot actually gets the kahunas to stop the theft and quit running to the police and crying that people are stealing from them and do something about it themselves. So that's my own personal thought and opinions and it should be yours. <laughs> it's a sad state of affairs. It's almost like we're living in California. Alright, so there's the rant of the day. Something completely random. It's sad. Uh, pawn shops have always been above board before now. <laughs> Let's get back to the story on the Jeep. But this story just kind of made me mad. I'm going to enjoy my cigar and think about all the money that went up in smoke from these scam artists. If you've been watching the restoration on the JK, you know that I got a JL set of wheels and tires to put on the truck. Bought these from a guy who had a really nice JL today. Super, super uh, nice shaped wheels. Uh, paid $4.50 for five of them. So I thought that was a good deal. I like this style. It's going to go well with the white and black that it, the Jeep is going to be. The problem with that is while the wheel spacing is identical, the lugs and lug nuts are different. Uh, from the JL and the JK. They went to a metric from a standard. So let's take a look at where I ended up with that because I felt it was like almost unsafe. She's been driving this thing for a week since it's been finished. But today I'm taking it back for a little while anyway. Well this actually might be the last video uh, at least in this series of restoring the JK. I'm about done with the dang thing. Uh, it looks really great. I got the horn working, lights on the dash, uh, new gear shifter. I could go through a bunch of different stuff. I uh, got the JL wheels on it, but I will say this. I was not happy with uh, one aspect of the JL wheels, and it's more of a safety issue than anything else. So let's take a look at the last thing that I want to do um, to the Jeep and it pertains to the wheels that I put on it which look great but I believe there's issues. This is a 2022 JL takeoff that I bought on uh, Craigslist for like not that much I think like 400 bucks 500 bucks for the whole set but you can see the lug nut here. It's a standard one half inch uh, stud on here and you can see that the lug nut actually goes down into that hole on the face. Now is that safe? I don't know. Let me show you what the factory lug nut looks like. Now it looks like it would be an easy fix, right? Get a half inch stud uh, lug nut with that 14 millimeter face on it uh, and tighten them down and you should be good to go, but no one makes anything like that, which I don't know why. Maybe, you know, safety concerns, getting sued, who knows. But there is a solution to be able to use those lug nuts on these wheels on this Jeep. Uh, if you're wanting to go from a JL wheel and putting on a JK. There's only one solution that I was able to find and I'll, I'll tell you I looked for a while so let's take a look at what I found. Only one company actually had any kind of solution to the problem that I had is putting the JL wheels on the JK and it was Sprider Tracks. So let's take a look what they sent me. Had to order two kits, one for the front, one for the back. They're, both, they're the same but um, they came two different kits. I don't even remember how much they cost now. I did get them back a little bit long ago. Okay, here we go. It's a, a Jeep one half by 20 to a 14 millimeter by 1.5 wheel adapter pair. Blue. Here we go. And this is what they look like. 
Beautiful. It comes with the regular lug nuts and some Loctite. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and install these. It will space the wheels out a little bit, probably I think an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, something like that, which is fine. Um, but I'll be able to use the larger, you can kind of see right there, the larger 14 millimeter by 1.5 millimeter lug nuts and not have to worry about the face of it not making enough contact with the wheels or loosening up. That's the biggest thing is you want it to loosen up. So let's stick these babies on. Beautiful. All right, I got this one on, looks great. When you look at the difference between the half inch and the 14 millimeter, just that mating surface, I can't see how you could put these lug nuts on a, a JL wheel on a JK and it'd be safe, truthfully. This one fits correctly. It is spaced out just a hair. Um, we'll take a look at the back side of it to see if you can notice any difference, but um, I think those lug nuts look great. So there's this side, the wheel's out about an inch and a half maybe, versus this side that it isn't on. But it's not crazy. Um, so I think it looks fine. And it definitely is a lot safer than that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish and put the rest of them on. And I think I'm going to just uh, let Jennifer drive it for a while. Well, that's going to be the end of the road for the videos on the JK, except for, you know, normal maintenance and stuff. I had to wash the wheels off. Let me tell you, those were supposed to be ceramic pads, but I think those dang Chinese people got me and got me some regular pads instead of uh, the uh, ceramic, because they are dusty as crap. So I'll probably have to switch those out, but I think the Jeep turned out beautiful. I'm super happy with it. Jennifer's driving the wheels off of the thing, and I feel better now that it's safer with the wheel spacers on it with the correct lug nuts. Now, I need to get it aligned, so I'm going to take it down to Nick at CNF Tire here in Franklin, who is the Jeep uh, guru, and I'll let him line it up, tell me if anything else is broken. But other than that, the Jeep is, for all intents and purposes, finished. Man, it's noisy out here. The Jeep looks great. I love the uh, wheel spacers and adapters. I believe that that makes a big difference as far as like safety goes. And uh, it doesn't hurt the looks being out another inch and a half, so what? whatever. I think it's great. So that's all there is with that. Uh, the TJ, I've started disassemble and sanding, so that's going to be the next project coming up. Uh, Jennifer's just going to drive the JK. Uh, we'll may maybe we'll go somewhere in it. Who knows? But I, I love how it turned out. I think it's beautiful. Uh, wouldn't change a thing. Uh, let's see how the TJ comes out. I appreciate you watching, being a subscriber. Any questions, comments, post them below. The JK.
is done. I'm David from the Redneck Garage. Kate, turning wrenches.